Now in part C, the problem becomes a lot more involved. What we've got essentially is that um, we have the particle Q has arrived here, and let's just imagine that that position is here. Okay, so that one is this position here, and it then carries on because F is now removed, it carries on to another position down here, say, where it comes to rest. So we're just going to mark that in that it comes to rest here, zero meters per second, say. And our job is to find out how long it takes for the particle to come to rest. Now, what this is going to mean is that I'm going to need to find this velocity here, this initial velocity at the time F is removed. That's, it's removed, remember, in this position. So if I call this, say, UO, okay, meters per second, then that UO is the final velocity over here. So if I mark that in as being V here, is equal to the UO down here. So I'll just put that there as UO. All right. So the first thing I need to do is get this final velocity. So how do I do that? Well, it's going to be using the SUVAT type equations. And what I know is that the initial velocity here is going to be zero, okay, because it was at rest. We're trying to find the final velocity, v, which I'm calling uo, okay, if you like. The time it takes is three seconds, so t equals three seconds. And the acceleration was what we have got up here, four thirds. Okay, four thirds of a meter per second per second. So therefore, what I can do is I can use the equation, okay, so I'll just say using v squared equals u squared plus 2as. I could use some other equations. I could use things like uh, s equals ut plus half at squared, for instance, uh, to find out the final velocity. But I've just preferred to use this one. As I say, experiment with the others and see if you can get the same answer. Anyway, so we've got that v squared, okay, is equal to u squared, so u is zero, so that term disappears, and then we've got two times the acceleration, which was four thirds, so that's four thirds, times s, the displacement of six meters, okay, so pop six in there. So, if you work this out, you'll find that it comes to 16. So, v squared equals 16, and so v will be equal to the square root of 16, which is 4. So, that's 4 meters per second. Okay, so what I can do now is just update my diagram, and I now know that this starts here with a speed of 4 meters per second. Okay? And what I'm going to do is just move the diagram up, so give us a little bit more room, okay, to carry on the next part of the problem. So we're in now to the second stage, and what I need to do is find out the acceleration through here. Okay, so I'll mark that acceleration in over the top, okay. Now it's actually slowing down, so the acceleration I would expect to be a negative value, okay? It would be decelerating in other words. Now to get that acceleration, what I'm going to need to do is mark on the forces then on our particle Q. So what are those forces? Well, we've got the weight acting downwards, okay? That is 3g newtons. and because it's on a horizontal plane here, there'll be the reaction upwards, which would be equal to the 3g newtons there. So we've got 3g newtons acting upwards. There's no forward force. Remember, the force F was removed. All that we've got is a frictional force acting back in this direction, opposing motion. 
and it's reached its limit so its limit would be mu times the normal reaction mu r well we know that mu is 10 over 21 so that's 10 over 21 times the normal reaction of 3g so we've got that and that would be measured in newtons so they're the only forces acting on the particle Q. Okay, we just put that there. That's Q. So we now move on then to get this acceleration by resolving. Resolving in the direction of motion, which is to the right, so that is the positive sense. Okay. So resolving to the right, we have got this force which acts in the negative sense, so that will be minus. 10 over 21 multiplied by 3g okay that's the mu r is equal to the mass and the mass of q was 3 kilograms so that's going to be 3 times the new acceleration a so if we work this out okay by dividing through by 3 you'll find that you get that a equals minus 10g over 21. Now I could work that out as a decimal but I'm just going to leave it like that for the moment. And notice it's a minus as expected it's a deceleration. Okay so what we've got to do now is to calculate this time I'm going to use the equation V equals U plus AT because I know the final velocity, it's zero, so we can put therefore zero equals the initial velocity, u was four meters per second, so that's four, plus the acceleration, which is now minus 10g over 21, so that's minus 10g over 21, and then times the time t. And if I rearrange this, okay, we get that, if, I mean if we add for instance 10g t over 21 to both sides what we get, I'll just carry on down here, is that 10g over 21 times t must equal the 4. Multiplying both sides by 21 and dividing by 10g gives that t equals 4 times 21 which is 84 divided by then the 10g. And if you work that out on the calculator you find that you get exactly 40 over 49 seconds. So that is the exact value or you might want to give it to an approximate decimal and as an approximate decimal that comes out at 0 0.816 seconds and don't forget that that is to 3SF. OK, so quite a long part then to part C, but I hope you understand that. And that brings us now to the end of question 8.